This video is to support a course that I'm teaching in introductory proof writing. So in the course, we just got done talking about the method of direct proof, the method of contrapositive proofs, and proof by contradiction, among another couple of assorted types of proofs. And this is kind of a bridge video before we start talking about proof by mathematical induction. So here we want to specifically talk about proving that statements are false, sometimes called disproof. So if our goal is to show that a mathematical statement P is false, then really we can just apply things that we've looked at before to the statement not P. In other words, we want to prove not P using any method. And really, we could almost stop the video right here because we know how to negate statements from a previous video. But there are some special examples of disproof um, mainly universal statements and existential statements that are sometimes a little bit tricky to negate. And although we negated them before, it's a nice time to review that. So let's say we want to prove that a universal statement is false. So generally, a universal statement has the form for all x, p of x. So in other words, for all x that satisfy a certain shape of object, p of x is a true mathematical statement. So if we want to show that is false, then we need to demonstrate that there exists an x such that not p of x is true. So in other words, the for all turned into there exists and the p turned into a not p. So let's look at some examples of disproving universal statements before we move on to existential statements. So the first example I want to look at is all primes are odd. In other words, for all prime numbers p, p is odd. So clearly this is false because we know about an even prime. It's the number 2. But let's just carefully negate this real quick. So the negation of this statement would be there is an even prime. And what is that even prime? Well, it's the number 2. So in other words, there exists a prime 2, which is even, if you wanted to put it exactly like this right here. Okay, so now let's move on to this one right here. This says for all real numbers a and b, if a squared equals b squared, then a equals b. So let's negate this statement and then show that the negation of this statement is true. So there are real numbers a and b, such that a squared equals b squared and a is not equal to b. So that would be the negation of that statement. Notice an if then statement turned into a p not q statement. So p implies q, the negation of that is p and not q. So, but now in order to finish this off, we need to give an example of this actually happening. So namely, maybe we would say it like that, uh, minus one squared equals one squared, but minus one is not equal to one. So there we gave a counter example to show that this universal statement was false. Now let's look at this uh, last universal statement, and that is for all natural numbers n, n squared minus n plus 13 is prime. So let's negate that. So there is a natural number n such that n squared minus n plus 13 is, well, what does it mean to be not prime? It means that you are composite. Then maybe we could finish this off with the counter example as well. And it's not too hard to check that 13 squared minus 13 plus 13 equals 13 squared, um, which is not prime. It's 13 times 13. Okay, let's get rid of this and we'll look at some examples of existence statements. So we just got done showing some universal statements were false. Now let's do the same thing for existential statements. Here we want to recall to negate an existence statement that there exists turns into a for all and then you negate whatever the statement is. So in other words, to show that there exists an x such that p of x is false, you need to prove that for all x, not p of x. So let's translate these into their negative real quick. 
and then we will show that the negative is true. So to disprove this statement, so there is an odd integer n such that 3n squared plus 4n plus 5 is odd, we want to show, so I'll write it like this, want to show for all odd integers n, 3n squared plus 4n plus 5 is even. Okay. So let's see if we can do that by calculation. So maybe we'll set n equal to 2m plus 1. That's like our definition for an odd integer. And notice that we've got 3n squared plus 4n plus 5 is equal to 3 times, well, we can take 2m plus 1 quantity squared. That gives us 4m squared plus 4m plus 1. And then we'll have 4 times that, so that'll be plus 8m um, plus 4, and then finally plus 5. Now we could do a little bit of calculation real quick. So notice that this is gonna multiply out to 12m squared plus 12m plus three. And then notice that this three, this five, and this four are gonna combine together to give us 12. But that means we've got a bunch of even numbers right there. We can factor a two out of them. So let's do that. We can factor a two out and let's see what we have left over. So we're gonna have 6m squared, and then we'll have, well, we got 12m there, we got 8m there. That makes 20m, factor the two out will be 10m, 10m, and then finally, three plus four plus five, again, that's 12, so that's gonna be plus six. And notice that this is even. So we have proven the negation of this statement. So we have disproven this existential statement. Okay, now let's move on to this one right here. That says there exists a real number x such that x to the eighth plus x to the sixth plus nine equals six x cubed. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. So to negate this, we wanna show for all x in R, we have x to the eighth plus x to the sixth plus nine equals six x cubed. Sorry, is not equal to six x cubed. So what we'll do is prove this by a contradiction. So in other words, we'll show that we have a solution and show that that brings us to some sort of contradiction. So if x to the eighth plus six x plus nine equals six x cubed, that tells us that x to the eighth plus x to the sixth minus six x cubed plus nine equals zero. But that actually has a nice factorization or the last three terms do. So we can group those last three terms and notice that that is going to be equal to x cubed minus three quantity squared. So let's see what we've got. We've got x to the eighth plus x cubed minus three quantity squared equals zero. But now what are we doing? We have an even power of x. We have an even power of something else. But that means that both of these objects are bigger than or equal to zero. In order to sum them to get zero, they must both be equal to zero. So that tells us that x to the eighth equals zero and x cubed minus three equals zero but notice that that is most definitely a problem because that tells us that simultaneously x equals zero and x equals the cube root of three, which is a contradiction. So we have proven that this is a false statement by contradiction, and that's a good place to stop.